It is so good to be together in the house of the Lord, to praise God and worship together, both here and online. We're always so grateful to know that we have this sense of being together through the internet and through us being present with one another. It is a joy of our heart to know that we have um, this together that we can share in and that being present here today with each and every person as you look to your left and to your right, you recognize that this is our church family. This is our church family. And it's such a joy to know that and see that as people are continuing to come in. Please take a, your red folder here and fill in. We'd like to know who's online and we'd like to know who's in person so that we can stay connected. Notice also there's ways for you to connect financially if you would like to give your tithe online or in person. We know that some people like to do it through checks and through money, I guess, and then other people like to do it online. So we just want to encourage that for each of you to know that the way in which you want to give, we're excited about and we're appreciative as we all share in knowing that God's work in, works in and through all of us. As we begin, we are reminded that um, we've got a new call to worship. New call to worship today, if y'all want to pull that up. And we'll have this be what we do through the rest of the Easter season. It's also on your bulletin, the cover of your bulletin, if you want to look at it. And the call to worship is that we, as Easter people, we as Easter people, if you'll just look at your bulletin, we'll plan to move forward with that and say together, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's do it one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.
We invite you to stand as you are able and out sing us this morning as we do our first two songs, Our God is Greater, followed by They Will Know We Are Christians. We are one in the spirit. 
ending, it looks like it's past the peace time. So to our online congregants, with much love, peace be with you. And for those of you here, pass the peace to those around you. for prayers of the people and before we pray before we go into prayer please keep in mind all of the prayer requests that you've heard in the past I don't have access to the prayer request list that are online but if you do have a prayer request that you want to submit if you want to submit it confidentially you can reach out to Pastor Karen or Pastor Jessica by text phone call or their private emails at the church if you would like for our prayer team re to receive your prayer request just send it to prayer at silvafumc.org and your prayer request will be lifted thank you so much for being a congregation that prays it makes a difference will you pray with me Loving God, thank you for your goodness and for all the different ways that you restore us. Guide us to walk in faith with gratitude. In the scripture that Pastor Karen has chosen for this morning, we will hear that the disciple Peter put his spiritual gift to work. God, put us to work. Even if it is the simple act of taking the time to gaze into someone's eyes rather than looking beyond them, to acknowledge them rather than ignore them. Use our varied gifts so that we all might do our fair share in this mutual ministry. Create a world where love, acceptance, and mutuality are expressed, where joy abounds, and where results are realized because we work hand in hand together. For those who know suffering, despair, illness, or fear, support and sustain them. Provide comfort, peace, healing, and safety. <coughs> <coughs> we
wherever there is conflict, hostility, or divisiveness. Stifle the fervor of those who foster hate, suspicion, <coughs> and misinformation. <clears throat> Help us to bring tolerance, compassion, calm, openness, renew us in your amazing, unconditional love so that it practically leaps from our hearts to others. Thank you that our future is shaped by your grace. Living as a disciple in Jesus is through the Holy Spirit who can bring us a life that is fresh and full of purpose. Thank you. Thank you for your son Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught the prayer that we now lift together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, guys. I'm Mary Emlyn, and today I'm going to be reading Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 20. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why are you surprised? You are looking at us as if it were our own power that made this man walk. Do you think this happened because we are good? No. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, gave glory to Jesus, his servant. But you gave him up to be killed. Pilate decided to let him go free, but you told Pilate you did not want Jesus. He was pure and good, but you said you did not want him. You told Pilate to give you a murder instead of Jesus, and so you killed the one who gives life. But God raised him from death. We are witnesses to this. It was the power of Jesus that made this crippled man well. This happened because we trusted in the power of Jesus. You can see this man, and you know him. He was made completely well because of trust in Jesus. You all saw it happen. Brothers, I know you did those things to Jesus because you did not understand what you were doing. Your leaders did not understand either. God said this would happen. He said through the prophets that his Christ would suffer and die, and now God has made these things come true in this way. So you must change your hearts and lives. Come back to God, and he will forgive your sins. Then the Lord will give you times of spiritual rest. He will give you Jesus, the one he chose to be the Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us continue in our worship as we go to the Lord in prayer for our offering. God, we know that it's impossible, impossible to outgive you when everything we have, who we are, is from you. Christ, shape our minds around being stewards of what you have given us, how we can provide and heal through your resources that you enable us to give and to continue to give. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, if you want to grab your offering, plate or your bowl and pass it.
Amen. You may be seated. Well, when one or more are gathered together, come be with me. If you're a child or a young, I need you, sir. I need you, sir. I need you, sir. I need you, sir. I'll give you all free money. <laughs> Here goes. A woman that doesn't want free money? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I'm going to try to sit down on here. The reason I may need you up here is for two things, okay? One is to count this money, and the other one is to help me out in case I can't get up. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, they laugh, thinking that's a joke. Okay. So, um, let's see, why don't you sit here so I have you kind of close to the hand? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. You can sit here. He's the money counter, so if you'll count the money there, not out loud or anything, just sign it. So tomorrow is April the 15th. Do you know what happens on April the 15th for grown ups? Oh, and many of us have a heavy heart, a heart as heavy as stone, because it's time to pay our taxes, and we worry about money, and we worry about taxes until we die. <laughs> well, here's an interesting thing. In Jesus' day, there were taxes too. In fact, they were rather excessive taxes. You see, Jesus lived in a time when the Roman Empire ruled the world. And there were these guys called Pharisees who were always trying to trick Jesus into saying something with his words that they could hold against him. And so one day they came to him and they said, hey, well, is it right that we should give our taxes to Caesar? Is that right? Do we have to pay taxes? And do you know what Jesus did? He took some of the money and he said, bring me a dinar, which was some of their money. And he said, tell me what it says at the top. United States of America. It says the United States of America. And then Jesus said, whose image is on that? And they said, Caesar's. And Jesus said, well then render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. So here's what we're going to do. Um, you're going to give yourself and this gentleman here and our baby friend a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> Yeah, take yours first. That's a <laughs> future banker in the making, right here, last night. Okay, so you can get up and do it. I just want to make sure you can actually get up in case you need to help me. Okay, so. And did you get your dollar and quarter? This is yours. You can hold it in your hand. All right, so here's what I want you to do. This paper money, this is yours to do whatever you want with. You could um, maybe buy a snack, or you could maybe buy a snack to share with your friends. That would be really cool. This quarter, may I borrow this back? This quarter has a very special purpose. You see, everything that we have comes from God. And so while you can do whatever you want with this dollar, which is free to you, this quarter, on the other hand, you must bring back and put in the offering next week. <coughs> Because we must learn early to support the things of God and the church. So what God wants us to do is to pay our taxes like good people, because he doesn't want to see his whole church in prison. But he also wants us to remember to do good and vital things with our money, things that are good for the world and things that support us and our communities. Lord, we thank you for your bounty. We thank you for free money. We thank you for the freedom of nature, the beauty of life itself. And I'll see you guys next week, because I know you're going to bring those quarters back and put them in the offering plate. <laughs> Very good.
Donna Marie, thank you so much for stepping in today as Jessica's on vacation. And we're missing her, but we're delighted that she's having that opportunity to be away with her family. So thank you for stepping in. Thank you also, Maggie, for stepping in and um, lighting the candles. And as always, we want to thank the choir for so much of bringing rather so much to us in our worship. It is bountiful, just as you were talking about, Donna Marie. It's interesting, this past week I just talked to somebody about how my father always taught us about the percentage of what we should give. Right when I was a little tiny child, if we had this to be our, um, what we through your holy word and let us hear what you have to say. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I wanted to share with you Bishop Carter, before he was a bishop down in the Florida conference, had written something or preached on this very passage. And when I read it, I thought there was two points in there that I wanted to bring up and share with you. And before he was the bishop, this is what he was sharing in this writing that I read. First was, he talked about bucket list. Now, most of us know um, what a bucket list is. It kind of became popular during the movie that was so long ago, brought to life by Jack Nicholson and also Morgan Freeman. Nicholson, Nicholson and Morgan Freeman. Remember in the movie how they were strangers but placed in the hospital room together? And when they were placed in the hospital room, they found out that they would both receive Ill that had illnesses that would be terminal. So their lives became intertwined with each other. And because of that, they went about checking off bucket list items that they had never done before but said that they had wanted to do. And during that time, they began reflecting upon their lives in the very different places that they went to. Y'all remember this movie, most of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I like the term bucket list. I, I think it's a good term to think about. Mike and I are hoping to go to Canada sometime in September, per needing to talk to you about that. <laughs> Making sure we can take a little trip up to there, and that's on our bucket list. And we probably will go one time. I won't maybe go again, but it will be an experience that's on my bucket list, and then we'll move on to the next one and think about that experience and what it's meant to us. Now, the movie itself turns to go much deeper than just accomplishing the experience of a bucket list item, right? It goes more about reflecting in your life or their life, about the people that were involved in their life, the opportunities that they had, pursuing dreams and considering their joyful life and what that meant and what they missed out on and maybe didn't live into as they had hoped. So there was all kind of struggles that were talked about in this movie. And like it is for our own selves and our own lives, there are struggles that we have in our humanness but in this message, this message that we're looking at today, I want us to look at the joy that emerges as we talk about and look into what it means to be people that have resurrected, that are people that understand and enjoy that as this Easter season, we're proclaiming Jesus' resurrection and the joyful response that it brings to our life, our life now. So I want us to just look at that. For whatever reason, it made me go back immediately to think of John Wesley, how he says to live a full life, one that's really engaging in our life. A formula of this is the simple rules. Most of us know these simple rules. They're really important to us. They help us gauge if our life, the day-to-day -life, day -day life, is full of this kind of life. And this kind of life brings a joyful life, according to him. 
when we seek to do good, right? Do good, seek out and take that moment to do whatever we can to make that moment good. Whatever that looks like. We imagine that and we take part in that. Second is we do no harm. So if we see and recognize that we're doing something that is wrong, takes us out of what we'd like to do, then we're supposed to pause, figure it out, and when we do, turn it around and make it be something good that we can do at that moment. And lastly, the third simple rule is to stay in love with God. Stay in love with the Lord. Now that means all kinds of fun stuff and hard stuff that are involved, but it brings and leads us to know the joy of experiencing and shaping a life that is following Jesus. So we stay in love with the Lord. Now that's the joyful life that we can be called to live in. Do good, y'all know these, let's do them together. Do good, do no harm, and stay in love with the Lord. They're called Wesley's Three Simple Rules. And we engage in these as a way of experiencing our life with Christ. Now, maybe it's challenging for us at times to know, at least note the joy that we presently are experiencing. Because in our moments, we can become so busy. We can become so involved in a task or do something that burdens us or we are burdened by something hard that we plan to say, we'll experience joy later. We'll experience it later. Now, one of my joys in moving here to Silva is getting to know so many of you. Over the last eight, nine months, I'm really starting to get to know a lot of the members in the congregation. And if I haven't gotten to know you, I've probably heard about you <laughs> and heard about the things you're involved in and what you like to do. I like hearing about the ways the endeavor, endeavors, both inside and outside of the church, that you all like to do. It's so much fun. And being in a small town like this, it's a busy one, isn't it? It's a busy, busy town. It's exciting. It likes to move and be a part of things. And one thing that I hope you've gathered about me in my life, in my life sharing it with you, is that I see ourselves as people that like to adventure, like to be adventuresome, be pioneers. So I love hearing about what you're up to and what you've gotten into. It expresses the whole of your life, getting involved and the joy of being a part. It tells me, like you mentioned, the gifts and the personalities that we each have, the way in which we express ourselves uniquely and wonderfully in collection to one another. Now, there's a lot of energy going in different directions in this church. Some of y'all may know how busy it is here. We have people in this church that at times take on leadership roles and then other times take on serving roles, both inside and outside of this building. But the momentum the momentum here is contagious. It is a value of this church. It is a quality of this church. It is an expression of who we are. It's welcoming. It is what makes people want to know what we believe here at Silva First and how we live into it as a church. It is a part of our current living testimony of who we are. Now, I pay attention to this. I pay attention to this because it speaks into the gospel message that we're looking at today. It speaks into the good news of Christ who continues to call us to mature as we go. Of course, stumbling at times but to live in the joy of our resurrection, Jesus' resurrection, our ongoing resurrection that we are living into now, where we live into the steadfastness of the grace and the mercy of salvation that is upon us. 
a faith walk on a life that brings us home to be with the Lord forever. So being a church that knows each other and the grace needed to be church reveals the mercy that we each have received at the cross. And especially in our passage today, what Peter is talking about is that the forgiveness of sin, we have been made right through Christ. And as we repent, it brings refreshment to our life. And this is continuous. And it brings joy in our hearts over <clears throat> and over again. It brings joy. Now, one thing that I wanted to talk about is that this leads to the second point that Bishop Carter is talking in his reading that I read. I'm going to read this to you. He compares two terms, so it helps us to look at ourselves. The biblical scholars distinguish between static and dynamic scripture reading. A static reading, we would see Christians as the Gentiles, Gentiles who get it. The reading that was just read by Emmeline. And Israel as a community does not get it yet. Instead is openly resistant. In contrast, a dynamic reading is more confessional, meaning something we, we take a look at. We are the ones looking in this way when we're reading the scripture who resist the gospel, who neglect the voices of the prophet, and who forget the, the Messiah's vocation is suffering. We are the ones who need to repent. And this means we take responsibility instead of placing responsibility on others. He goes on to say, we look more deeply to discover past the obvious inference that the children of God are good and everyone else is wrong. For all of God's children do not always live as children of the light. We are resurrection people. However, there are places in our lives where we still live in the tomb's darkness. I say this because in the passage today, there's a part when Peter is speaking that scholars are just not sure <clears throat> if he's standing up and telling the religious leaders what to do without seeing also that he has done the same thing. Now, I would argue against that. I would be on the scholars on one side of this. That he also betrayed Jesus and ran off at some point. We know we've talked about this. He verbally neglected saying what he needed to say about Jesus, standing up for him, and wasn't there for Jesus when Jesus needed him. But if we go to the account of John, where Jesus was preparing breakfast for all his fishermen, we see that the restoration of Peter occurs there. Jesus asked him three times if he loved him. It's one of my favorite passages. Isn't that just, it's just a beautiful passage. He asked him three times if he could confess, if he would respond to him and bring him back to this place. Yes, Peter said, yes, I know that. I know that. I know that. Yes, yes. And last he says, I know you know everything, Jesus. And Peter confesses. That in his wrongdoing, he now confesses his love for Jesus and his obedience. And Jesus simply tells him, go follow me. Go follow me. So when Peter stands up to speak to the Jewish leaders, himself being Jewish, what he has already witnessed in his life is a deep sense of receiving deep forgiveness bringing the greatest joy of his life, knowing this. In this address, he gives a shot to explain two things quickly. We gathered these, two things. First is he's saying, I, didn't, I did not heal the man at the beautiful gate. It was not by my power. It was not at all. He wants them to know quickly that the way of healing comes through the power of Jesus, 
And as we know, it comes in different ways and different measures, but it's Jesus who heals our life in beginning with that of forgiveness. So he's talking about this power bursting out of the grave. He's saying, let's be clear about this. Let's be clear about this. Because this is how our life knows that Jesus' power reigns. And second, and this is kind of what we're getting at and really closing in on in this passage, is that he wants us to know the joy that comes from repentance. The joy of receiving this. That it creates joy that cannot be robbed. Uh Uh-uh. Not be robbed unless we give it away. It is something for us to have and something that is making us clean and refreshed and having a new start every time we seek repentance, seek forgiveness. We know God's delivered us from that. It's this power to erase our sin and continue to be with us. (laughs) It's such a joy that it creates in us commencing to do something. Just as the music has already proclaimed, the children's message, what you also shared, it commences us to doing something, doing things. And it's a joy and energy that we live within. Peter wants us, everyone, to know this and to see it and to receive it and have it in our lives. Now, I was fortunate to... Mike and I were fortunate to be married by Philip Cole. He was such a delightful pastor in my life. And also, Dr. Tuttle. Do you all know Dr. Tuttle? Mm, mm, mm. Now, I like Dr. Tuttle. I love Dr. Tuttle. <laughs> he retired and became a, a, a minister at St. Paul's. I loved his passion. I love the joy he had about Christ. I love his compassion for others. And he wanted everybody to live for Christ. I love the way he giggled. It was great. He's written a couple books. I felt so loved by him. He was so good at that. Sometimes, every so often, you may see me do this. Because Dr. Tuttle would hold up his hand, his fingers, so when he got excited, he would preach like this. He had gotten that memo, you know, a long time ago that says you're not supposed to point at anybody. (laughs) And he'd realize this. And instead, he would hold up his hand and a ball in his hand, and his thumb would be upright just close enough to where he not would be pointing to anybody else, but also to himself. I saw that even as a child. I witnessed that joy. And he did this because he wanted himself to be part of the solidarity of whatever the struggle it was that was being preached on or talked about, that he too was continuing to mature in this continuing to understand it and grow in this. He was passionate about a life of faith and the joy of walking in this, the joy of being able to know we are forgiven people and maturing as we go along brought freedom to us knowing that we're doing this all together through the ups and downs of our lives. Bishop Carter especially points out in reading these scriptures that a way we address our walk of faith and the places we need to be responsible to change are the directions and courses that we need to be mindful of. That this is a dynamic way of looking at scripture. Because Christ went to the cross didn't withhold any of us being able to not have any of our sin forgiven. And in this, this is part of resurrecting grace. Resurrection. It is resurrecting us into life. Now, if you look at the cover of the bulletin, you'll notice that it's barely painted in. Notice the the mistakes that are out of the lines. 
Some of you probably have already noticed that. But notice them. Because it doesn't matter if there is parts and places where you're coloring in where it gets out of the line or doesn't happen exactly like we hope it will. That we are coloring in a life that is the response, the commencing of the joy we have in our life because Christ resurrected from the dead. In it, that leads us to daydream about the adventures to live in joyfully in this life and, and what it will cause us to do next in our life. Coloring in our life with the joy of our salvation. Now I'm going to hang up posters in the back eventually where we're going to be able to outline some different places in our life because I want us to see these marked out too, these described, and that is the places where we'll have that we are involved in discipleship making, that we're participating in classes and growing in our faith. And I'll have the leaders mark this or those that are doing it outside in the community somewhere else or your quiet time or what that looks like. We're going to let you mark that. And then also the places that we're doing mission, both inside the church and outside of the church. Because these two are places that I want us to, to more obviously see how we're growing in our faith through this dynamic of growing in faith and growing in mission to give to other people, responding to our faith, responding to the joy we have. Now I'll be out there and talk about that. We'll look at that next week and have that hung up for you. And maybe this isn't important for me to add at the end of the service, but I thought I'd end with something a little bit funny. Try, I think it's funny. Y'all may not think it is at all. But I was listening to a podcast by Kate Bowler. I don't know if some of y'all listened to her, but I was listening to one of her podcasts, and it was when she was meeting with the guy from the office named Rain Wilson. I wouldn't have known his name, but Rain Wilson. And he was talking about living within the area of Central America. He was there as a small child, and he was talking about having a pet sloth. You, you want to pull that up? I mean, they're adorable. Look how cute. He was talking about having this pet sloth, and that every night his, it would be in its cage, and then every day his father would go outside and get this pet sloth. They'd lock the cage at night, <laughs> They'd lock the cage at night, but the sloth worked really hard to unlock the, the cage, and little by little, we'd get out of it. But the father never was concerned about it getting lost because it could barely get 30 feet from the house every morning. <laughs> I just love that. That he would be so slow that he couldn't get out and go any farther. You know, the joy of our salvation, the joy of resurrecting grace is that whether we get out slow or fast, it is for us to go for it, for us to go for it and get as far as we can get. We don't want to end up back in the cage where we began. We want to keep going for it and going for it and having that joy and it just be so peaceful in our lives that it's contagious. I imagine everybody in this room has had somebody come up to you and say, what is it that you have? What is it that you have? And it becomes a perfect time to share. A perfect time to share. I invite you to do this because it is true refreshment of forgiveness. Like a shower, we've had a lot of those for the plants coming about. A shower we take, a swim, a cold hike, the bountifulness of being able to be with friends. We're so fortunate to live in community with each other. 
and the bounty of that life resurrecting love of the Lord speaking to us. That is refreshment to our lives. Leading us and continuing to move us to celebrate our bucket list as followers of Christ. How will we live? What joy will we commence next? What do we sit in now joyfully? Living for Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is my joy now to welcome Rebecca up front. We are so blessed to have Rebecca join in our church. She has the gift of compassion that I already have been able to be a part of in her life. And um, we're so grateful that you're joining the church. So grateful. Yeah, come on, join, join her for a second while I get one thing. I want to make sure I have our sheet with everything on it. Rebecca loves, and she loves big, so we're grateful that she wants to join the church and has already expressed interest in wanting to help with the children's ministry in different ways, so we're blessed by that. It's matching a need in our congregation with also a gift that you have, so we're grateful for that. But right now, I want to ask you two questions. You're joining a community that is one that grows in grace. We're growing in grace ongoingly. We know we're not a perfect congregation, but we are one lovely congregation with big hearts, big energy, and we're so excited to be a part of it, all of us together. Because of that, we need each other. We need each other to grow in our faith. And so today, by your committing here, you're saying, I want to keep growing in my faith and I want to take part in the ministries. So I'm going to ask you two questions. The first one is, and it is, as members of Christ Universal Church, Rebecca, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. I will. I will. Thank you. And as members of Christ church here at Silva UMC, will you faithfully participate with your prayers in the ministries of the work here at the church, with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and witness? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Well, we are so excited that you are, are part of our church, and we um, just want to live into being in community together. As a church, we have a question to ask you. Members of the household of God, I commend Rebecca to your love and care. Do all you can to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. And if so, in your commitment, please also share these words together. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ. And in your congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of our church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Can I pray for you? The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal love in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to be upon Rebecca as she joins our church family. Give to her what she needs to be gifts in this congregation. Give to her also the gift of the joy of salvation, the resurrecting love that you offer to each one in this room. May the joy of salvation, the joy of Christ in our life, be close and in our midst always. Amen. 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 All right, let's welcome her. Thank you. 
I'm so glad. to stand as you are able, as we together reaffirm our faith. We are not alone. alone. We, we live in God's, God's world. world. We, we believe in God. God. opportunities that are listed on the back of your bulletin 
So please take a look at those and it's a chance to get involved from missions to uh, contributing to other efforts that are made through this church. Also be in prayer for the upcoming general conference. And uh, I know that this Sunday is the last round of the Masters Golf Tournament. <laughs> and I did notice that the golf tournament was missing from the bulletin. There is a, a fundraising golf tournament for the Wesley Foundation. Am I right about that, Mike? Okay. I think the date might be April 27th. I'm not sure. Thank you. Somebody back there knows. And I wish I had more information to share with you about this on this Master's Sunday. But um, please call the church if you're interested in participating in that as well. Or Mike says reach out to him. That's a great resource as well. And since you're standing, please join us in our closing hymn, How Great Thou Art. Rebecca, you and I will go on out and let everybody be able to greet you as a new member of the church. Receive this benediction. Lord, 
Nobody's going to take the joy of your resurrecting love that has been placed in our hearts. We guard it and we share it and let that joy just change the world. We say this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.